What's going on, people? It's your boy back with another reaction video. Yo, I'll be reacting to four creepy true Uber stories. This is from, I believe it's Mr. Nightmare, I want to say. Uh, I don't think I got it from another. No, yeah, yeah, it's Mr. Nightmare. So, three, oh, three, four <laughs> creepy true Uber stories. You know, I've never taken an Uber. I've taken, I lived once when I was in Vegas. <laughs> Cause I was just like, uh, cause my uh, my cousin was with me. He was able to get, I guess, discount or something like that on it. So he got it, and well, I got it on my phone. I had to download it on my phone. He had like a car, so they they be giving out cars like that. I've been on train here on L, and uh, somebody give me, hey, I got a five dollars off a of lift, stuff like that. And that's the only time I've ever taken. That I've never taken Uber ever. I heard some people say they prefer Lyft over Uber. Some people say they prefer driving with Lyft over because I think they said they allowed to accept tips. But I'm I was trying to figure if you're an Uber driver, how do they know you're not accepting the tip? I mean, if the person offers a tip, you know, they, I'm not gonna say, ah, oh, I can't accept it. So I'm not I'm not I'm telling I'm not supposed to. I'm gonna take the tip. Like, how, how would they know? Like, <laughs> unless they do some shit, like they call you and then they they hide and if somebody actually works for Uber, they offer you a tip and you taking it. Like, you took a tip and you're fired now or some shit, or, or, they, or they lowered your rating, so now you're closer to being fired from Uber and never being a driver again. Anyway, let's get this. This is like 11 minutes long. So here. I'm gonna turn my phone off. Damn thing, I gotta. What you're about to hear was the worst night of my life. I went out to a downtown club with my boyfriend and his friends on a Saturday night. My boyfriend and I hadn't been getting along for a while, and at some point in the club, we had an argument. I didn't want to be there anymore, so I went outside and called an Uber to pick me up. It was raining that night. So I waited under the awning of a building nearby. To the I know some people that refuse to use Uber because they've had a bad stopped. experience. I had a bad experience in a taxi. Woman driving rolled down the window once. She said Uber, and I said yeah, and then her name. She said yes. So I got in the back seat. No, you did wrong. You should have said what's your name. I'm pretty sure she didn't answer. When I didn't hear a response to my question, I shot a glance up from my phone for a second. Going the wrong way. The woman had both hands firmly planted on the steering wheel. She was driving in a very stiff, upright position. She I got a stick up my ass. curly hair and a somewhat darker skin complexion. She was driving down the street I usually took to get home. Only she was going the opposite way. I didn't want to speak up and correct her just yet. Because maybe she was taking a different route. The further we went away from my house though, the more concerned and frustrated I got. Finally, I spoke up and told her she was going the wrong way. She said in a horrible, thick accent, something about how she was going to the highway instead. I knew for a fact the highway wasn't the quicker route, though. Then, my phone vibrated, and I looked down to see the notification from Uber. It said on my screen, meet Uber driver now. I opened up Shit. the app, and it said my car she... just arrived at the point she had the was standing at. And that the car I was supposed to get in was a black Nissan. You didn't see that before? I started saying in a louder voice to the driver that she wasn't my Uber. I asked her to pull over and let me out. And when she didn't seem to acknowledge me, I started to actually yell and push at her seat. Even though the car was moving, I even tried opening the door, but the child lock was apparently... Oh, out. shit. I Fucking child lock. She finally looked at me through the mirror, then pulled off to the side. The door clicked unlocked, and I got out of the car and walked away from it. My actual Uber driver was calling me, and I picked up, apologizing, asking him to come to my current location. He said he'd be right over. And five minutes later, the car pulled up. When I got in the car, I explained everything to him. And he stopped the car, looked at me, and told me I'd just escaped a sex trafficking trap. Shit. 
There had been reports of multiple fake Ubers going around trying to trick unsuspecting victims into getting into the car to lure them to unknown locations. I guess when you start fucking out, it was apparently part of a sex trafficking. The game was up. The drivers were usually female to appear less intimidating to the female victims. I just want to stress to everyone to make sure the car you're getting into is actually your Uber. But yeah, the, the thing you did wrong was you said, "What's your name?" And when she said it, then you're like, I, you could verify that that's her. But you said the when name. When I was she, yep, that's me. After leaving a bar, I started messaging people on Tinder. Some girl named Alicia had messaged me, so I messaged her back. She answered almost immediately, asking what I was doing that night. I said I was just leaving a bar looking for someone to hang out with. She wrote back, you should come over and smoke. I said, yeah, send me her address. She sent back her address promptly. It seemed like the quickest, easiest, most ideal Tinder match a guy could ask for on a Saturday night. I called for an Uber to drop me off at that address. The driver pulled up in his Honda, and I got in the front seat. Usually I would get in the back seat, but I was decently drunk and feeling extra social. The driver seemed cool. I was honest with him about where I was going, telling him I was about to meet a girl from Tinder. He laughed and said, nice. He started going on about nice. stories meeting girls as an Uber driver and such. On the way there, I asked Alicia for her number, and she gave it to me. I started texting her, and she gave normal answers. When we got to the house, normal the driver answer. said the house seemed familiar to him. Had to admit, it did look a little sketchy since there were no cars in the driveway and the lights were off. Oh, this is an Uber driver will save your life. I thanked him and said goodbye, and he drove away down the block and stopped near the end, I'm guessing setting up his next ride. I walked up to the house and tried to ring the bell, but I didn't hear a bell from the inside. So I knocked on the door. Then I tried calling Alicia. It went to voicemail after one ring. Oh, you better get robbed. Right after saying it's open, come inside. Then there was a knock at the window, which almost gave me a heart attack. I looked at the window, and even though there were no lights on inside, I saw the blind was slightly lifted. And no. Someone was waving their hand on the other side. You better get robbed. Before I tried the door. A number not saved on my phone started calling. It's the Uber driver, I bet. I assumed it was Alicia, so I picked up. But instead of hearing the voice of a girl, I heard the familiar voice of my Uber driver. He tried like, run! A very concerned voice to walk away from the house right now. I then saw the Uber driver's car pull back up in front of the house. He told me to get back in the car. I hung up the phone and listened to him. As soon as I got in the car, <laughs> like, okay. he drove away from the house and told me that the house was vacant. And just the previous month, someone had been lured into that house, robbed and murdered. Oh. It was a story that likely could have been similar to my own had I stepped into that house. Damn, well, they got a kill person. It was a lot for me to take in, but I thanked that Uber driver the best I could. He and saved I your life. Remember because he was so cool and I couldn't appreciate him enough. The next morning when I was sober, this was even more disturbing to think about. You drunk and thinking with your little head. I almost got killed. <laughs> it was a Monday night, a slower night for an Uber driver, especially in our bum ass town. So when a trip request popped <laughs> this, up on my This had to be a black around, person. A bum ass. <laughs> I was picking up a guy <laughs> a named John. Wrote this story. I drove across the neighborhood to a corner of Could the have store been that was closed at this hour. There were two young guys waiting on the corner, and when I pulled up to the curb, they got in the car. I confirmed John's name to make sure he was who I was picking up. Then I started heading to their destination. Oh, you're the Uber driver now. The two whispered to each other, and it was a little odd. I looked at the rearview mirror every once in a while, and every time I did, they would both notice and look back at me. I kept trying not to look, but I found myself accidentally doing it over and over. It was because you're nervous. Headed. Neither of them answered. I would have stopped running again. My car. They didn't hear me because the back window was open and there was wind noise. So I asked again. This time, one of them yelled, "Harris Avenue." It didn't answer the main point of my question, which was to be polite and make small talk. But it did let me know these two were not exactly people I wanted in my car. I felt my big toe press a bit harder on the gas instinctively, just knowing I wanted to get there sooner. <laughs> get the fuck out. We got to the street. But the apparent address they wanted me to pull up to was some rundown storefront with a group of guys in front. Oh boy. 
I slowed down and asked if this was it. I turned around to face them and saw they were both wearing masks now, similar to the masks from the movie The Purge. I felt something press up against the back of my shoulder. Oh, shit. I assumed it was a gun. They told me pull up to where the guys were outside. I did so, and three big guys also wearing masks came up to my window, demanding my wallet. I gave it to them without hesitation, and the two guys in the back seat got out. The five masked men all together walked away from my car, one of them kicking at my door while passing. <laughs> wow. I drove away and reported it to Uber, who said they'd get in contact with the authorities. Nothing it turned out the info used on that John person's account was all fake. He was using a stolen credit card. I've heard it happen in here. two hundred fifty dollars, my IDs, and countless cards in my wallet. But I'm just happy I escaped with my life. Surprised they ain't try to take your cell phone. He took your wallet, and then they kicked his car. <laughs> Walker, what an asshole! After leaving a friend's Super Bowl party, I called an Uber to drive me home. When I got in the Uber, there was a guy in a baseball hat sitting in the back seat. I didn't say anything to acknowledge it. I'd have been like, nah, you good. Driver. I figured I must have called an Uber pool instead of just a regular Uber. Mm. I didn't care, though. I, I would have cared. House, I got out of the car and shut the door. No, they not to know you live. The second door shut on the other side, though. Oh, shit. When the car drove away. I saw the guy who had been sitting next to me in the baseball hat, standing in the street, facing in my direction, but his head down so that his hat was covering his face. I said, what's up? What's going on? I wouldn't even say nothing. Still, I knew something was going on. So instead of walking to my house, I started walking around the block. <laughs> I saw the man on the opposite yeah. sidewalk across the street walking in my same direction. When there was an intersection in the street, I turned. When I saw he did the same thing, I ran. When I saw he started to run, no. to, the adrenaline kicked in. He was trying to wait till you get to your door. Ever ran in my push life. you into your, your house. I ran then, faster than him. Fucking when I made it to my house, I ran to the backyard before he could possibly stab the shit out of me. Then I went into the house. I called the Uber driver at once, and he told me the guy next to me said he knew the next guy the Uber driver would be picking up, which ended up being me. The driver had his enemy. That was he random. Said he would report the guy. I don't know what happened because I had never called or texted the Uber driver again. I also don't know why exactly that guy would be targeting people getting out of Ubers, but it definitely taught me to be more. Yeah, that was random. Because he had to get out the car if he said that. Because if he didn't, the Uber driver would be like, I thought you said you knew that person, and so you would have had to get out of the car. So it's like he didn't care who was the next person was. He's like, I'm doing something to this brother. Brothers. Robbing or killing this person, but that is like if because that's stupid. Because now you can be tracked. So because you put your info in on that list, like like the other people it was fake info or something, or you was able to steal someone's identity or something like that. But even then, if you take a picture, like well, I guess you could change the picture. Like well, I'm Peter Jackson or something. Wow. And that was the first name that came out. And I just take my picture, put it on there, and be like, this is me, you know. But what was that the second story? Well, I was like, no, was that the first one where he he said well she was supposed to tell from the point of view of a woman, uh said that uh I you just said that you said, Hey, you you so and so and they're like, Yeah. You never say the person if you're looking for someone, you never say their name, you said you, you or you uh you might say their first name, but then like, what was your last name again? And they don't know it, you know it. Be like, you're not that person. You never say. I would just say never say that person's uh name. Like ask them, like what's your name? Like especially Uber, if they don't have their picture up there, like uh ask their name and, and ask them repeat it back to you. You know, or maybe. Ask them their license plate number or something like you know if if that's the if that's supposed to be the right with this they supposed to put their license plate on there so maybe like, I I usually memorize my license plate just because I I had a cop uh, pull me over once ask me to step out of the car and I'm just like oh shit here we go with this shit again and he asked me I I guess they had a 
issue where somebody stole a car that looked very similar to mine. And at this time, I had a, I had a black, uh, I want to think it was a 2006 uh, Mustang, Ford Mustang Coupe. And apparently somebody had taken, somebody had robbed or something taking the car or whatever and he was just he didn't know it was me and he didn't even ask the description of the person oh i guess all maybe he didn't have a description but all he knew was a car was hijacked that's it so and he said hijack so i'm assuming that someone took a person out of their car and took their car so you would think they would at least know the race of the person but i guess they were black and they didn't know the height or size or whatever so, but anyway he has me stuff out he asked me the uh my license plate number. And luckily at this time, I was memorizing the license plate. I don't know why. I think, well, I think they asked me when I was at like the DMV or something, uh, they asked me what the license plate number for the previous plate I had on there. And I had to go outside and write it down and stuff like that and bring it back in. So I just started memorizing it. And, then, and I just remember, I remembered it. I think I forgot like the, the last, digit or something like the last letter or something but he was like, I was close enough but I was like can't you just run the plate <laughs> he's like why do I need to you could literally just go because you have because it, it, it was him and another guy and then of course another cop pulls up and now it's uh, four of them there so I was like why don't you just I was thinking myself why don't you just run the plate he's like well you get my driver's license and my insurance and the uh, my registration let me just Run the run all that, and you can see that the VIN number, all that you can see that this is my car, you know. So, but he, he didn't run. I, I was like, I, I got most of the license plate, couldn't for somebody I couldn't remember. Like, I don't know if like, I was nervous. Cause when that other cop pulled up, I was like, <sighs> I was getting, I was, like, I was like, just sitting there, like, I don't want nothing to pop off and somebody to get nervous and pull a gun on me and accidentally end up shooting me or something. Like, I was like, I do not want that. But luckily none of that happened. He, get, he just, uh, he, I guess, was good enough. He's all right, you're good to go. And cause I, cause like I said, you memorized most of it. I just forgot one of the last, I think it's last digit. And he's all right, and he's like, you're good to go. So then I just let me go. But yeah, like Uber, I know, I know, Quite a few people, particularly a few female friends that I have, that I have uh, they don't, they said they don't trust like Uber and stuff like that. Cause I was like, well, why do you trust a cab? Cause I know they're taking cabs before. And they're like, I don't know if it's cause it's just older, it was actual, you know, company would have to take their car into and, and drop the, the, some place, you know, you had to drop the taxi off, you know, turn the taxi back in at the end of your ship, stuff like that. That maybe it's that, maybe it's more accountability somehow. Cause I'm like even Uber didn't know who you are. Cause I've actually filled out application for Uber. Cause I was gonna drive for them once. Uber and Lyft. For some reason, Lyft was like I was disqualified. I don't know why. And they didn't explain why. They just said you are not eligible to drive a Lyft. I don't know. If somebody I was that made me think like somebody stole my identity or something. Was driving and got in trouble. I was like, why is like I do the application at the end? And like you are uneligible, and it didn't explain why. Well, Uber, I had to go to some office downtown Chicago, and I just never went. To it. I ended up, I was like, I just find a job somewhere else. Cause I was like, I was like, that was gonna be some side hustle type thing, you know, to make ends meet. I said, plus I wanted to do some other things. I needed some money real fast, and I didn't want to sell drugs, so <laughs> I was like, I just do that. But I ended up not doing it because I ended up getting a, a, a like a better job inside the job I had at the time. So I got paid like I think it was like an extra you know, three dollars or something like that. But uh, but yeah, just I noticed that like, like a lot of my friends they don't they don't trust Ubers or well, particularly Uber. But some of them don't trust Lyft either because they feel like people just stuff like this can happen. You know, because this is harder for especially a taxi. Cause they look like a taxi. The car looks like a taxi. Uber, they get, some people can have driven for Uber, had that stick in their car and maybe not drive for them anymore. You know, 
know, stuff like that. But a tax, I guess, is hard to get unless someone runs their own taxi service. You know, I've seen that, like, in uh, Vegas, there's some people who are independent. They don't drive for a company. They drive for themselves, and they have their, their – but they're registered taxis that have, like, the, you know, the uh, numbers and stuff on their car, so you can actually – look them up so i don't know maybe that's what it is but i just like mm. i mean any of that stuff anything back happen any of that stuff you get in a stranger's car anything can happen you know or as some of these stories the uber driver was the one who's the hero or the the person who was the uber driver was the victim so it, it all comes full circle everybody and what was that? What was that? That saying that Eric Draven said, he's like, victims, aren't we all? <laughs> anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed my reaction. One and should hit that thumbs up button. If you did, make sure to comment, subscribe, and share. I'll see y'all next video. Peace.